Everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know? And uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. Much love. I appreciate the support. Oh, we back in here, man. We leaving Augusta, man. Headed to Mecklenburg, man. Headed to Mecklenburg. The notorious Mecklenburg. But before we get there, man, I want to tell y'all, man, I appreciate y'all in 2022. I appreciate all the subscribers, man. I see we hit the 50K. We're a little bit above that now, man, so we're steady moving. I appreciate the love. I appreciate everybody who came over there on my uh, new channel, Banky Pam, Pure Deliciousness. We uh, we almost at 3K, so if you ain't over there, please come join me over there. We cooking over there. We making that good food. Um, uh, if you ain't subscribed, man, please take the time to subscribe. Tell somebody about the, the channels, man, both channels. Let them come over there and subscribe. We ain't got nothing but positive energy over here. We just trying to cook some good food, have some fun, tell some stories, man, and teach some people about these lessons, man. Let them get these blessings out of these lessons, man, so we can might, you know, stop somebody from making this uh, wrong turn in life. But in the meantime, in between time, man, let's get to this Mecklenburg story, man. It was, uh, woo. You know, you heard all these stories about Mecklenburg, you, you know, you you got this stuff in your mind and now you on your way there. So, you you know, it's a lot going through my mind. It's a, a lot of uh, emotions. I don't know what to truly expect. You got to remember, I'm still early in my bit, man. I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to Mecklenburg probably in 90, I think 90. So, you're talking about 87, 89, 90. Uh, 87, 88, 89. Now you talking about four years into my sentence, and I'm already going on. Um, I've already been to the wall. Now I'm going on the disciplinary institution. This was the Red Onion, Wallace Ridge, King Mountain, Sussex One, Sussex Two of its time, all combined into one. Everybody who was getting in trouble in the system in uh, Virginia. Um, any type of violence, any type of uh, uncontrollable uh, 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 outbreaks or, or, or things of that nature. If you was using that Bethlehem, if you was fighting the police, uh, if you was constantly in fights, you was going to end up on Mecklenburg. That was the only place, that was the last stop. The buck stopped right there. So here it is, I'm, I'm early in my bit and I'm already on my way there, man. So, you know, I'm coming from segregation from the situations that I had on Augusta. Um, you know, I guess Augusta got to the point where they ain't want me there. It was a lot more to uh, me not being there, just the incidents that I was in. It was also an incident that I ain't even talking about, I haven't talked about yet, but I'll probably go back and revisit that, that I had, you know, with this captain, man, and he didn't like me, and, um, you know, he did some uh, 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 crazy stuff and said some crazy stuff to me when I was, you know, incapacitated, chained down or whatnot. And, um, you know, I said some stuff to him back, you know. So I, I, I think he eventually, you know, felt like he didn't want me on the compound because he felt like I might have been a threat to him. So all of that played a factor in me, you know, getting transferred to Mecklenburg. Um, coincidentally, later on, that captain became a warden. And um, years later, I was sent back to Augusta and it was brief, real brief. They didn't even want me there because he was a warden. He didn't want me there. So I stayed there less than 30 days and they got me right back up off of there. But that's a whole nother story. But when I get to Mecklenburg, I go in the hole. I'm in segregation, you know, and um, it, 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 you start to learn real fast, man, because you see how small the blocks are. These were the smallest blocks far as prison that I ever been in these blocks. Like I told y'all before, they only housed 12 people. And it's the same way in segregation. It's only like a small part, a small block with six cells on the bottom tier and six on the top tier. It's only two tiers. 
and it's a small day area with, you know what I'm saying, it has the booth right there, and it didn't have a TV or anything in that in segregation, but the pods look the same on population as they do in segregation. So it'd be the same block, the same size, everything, except for the fact that they had, you know, a TV in there and they had little tables and stuff in the block that you could sit down and watch TV, eat, conversate, do whatever. Um, I stayed in segregation for a minute, man. I cannot remember exactly how long, but I stayed in there a minute before I was actually able to, you know, to be released to population. But before that happened, I don't know if that's customary or whatever. I don't know if it was because of the amount of time I had and the situation that I had already been in, but I actually had to have a meeting with the warden, the system warden, and the major before I was even released to population. And um, that was a, 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 a rememberable event because they called me over there, so they take me over there in shackles and handcuffs and everything, and I get over there to the warden's office, and um, I, I'm sitting in there, and I got uh, assistant warden in there and the major, and the major get to talk to me about DC and all this other stuff. And then when the warden finally came in, I think his name was Thompson, man, and, 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 and for, he always remind me of Luther Vandross, man. He looked just like Luther Vandross to me, you know. So uh, I remember when them coming in, man, they was sitting there, they was acting so casual. They was drinking coffee and eating cookies, and then he started talking to me, asked me, you know, my name and all of this and you know uh, uh, where I'm from and you know what what was going on on Augusta and you know the, the, the uh, incidents that led to me coming up there so I'm answering all these questions like you know like I'm on an interview or something and then you know he basically he's smiling and everything he had a calm demeanor and he basically tell me well you know where you at now right I said yeah you know I'm on Mecklenburg he said well you know why we carried up here so I was like you know no, nah, I don't, you know. So he started explaining it to me. He said, well, look, I see your, what you was charged with. I see what you've been doing since you've been in the penitentiary. I see all the way to what you was doing in the jail. So I'm letting you know I got all of your records. Everything about you is before me in black and white. I done read it. And I'm letting you know right now, on this yard out here, it's different from any yard you've been on. So these killers out here. You think you a killer, all these dudes out here killers. All these dudes out here is gonna do whatever you gonna do and probably more. So, I ain't got no problem with letting you on the yard. He said Augusta sent paperwork to me and told me to uh, beware of letting you out on the yard because you was uncontrollable, right? I said, what? He said, yeah, yeah, they say you was uncontrollable. They say, you know, you, you, know, you had the uh, capacity to do whatever. And I just want to let you know, there's a whole lot of other dudes out here that's just like that. So I ain't got no problem with letting you on the yard. But the reason why we having this meeting is because I want to let you know personally, face to face, we going to put you on the yard. But if you go out there and you put your hand on any one of my officers, I promise you, you will be in segregation for the entirety of your sentence. I would not transfer you, I would not move you, I would keep you in segregation until they let you out, if they let you out. So that's all I wanted to do. That's all my colleagues wanted to do, to let you know that, to get that understanding. So do you understand what I'm telling you? And I'm looking at this man and I'm saying to myself, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand, I, I, I understand. I said, I ain't looking for no problems. I'm just trying to do my time, whatever. He said, okay, that's all fine. And then you go out there. I can tell you problems out there for you if you want. But I'm telling you, do not put your hands on one of my officers. Do we have that understanding? I said, yes, we do. He said, okay. Well, you have a nice day, man. We're going to release you to the population. And, um, you know, I don't know when you're going to get out there. You're on the list or whatever. But we're going we're gonna to sign the papers for you to be released. So... I remember leaving that office, man, and thinking to myself, man, this is this is insane, man. This is crazy, you know. But when they walking me back, I'm looking at the yard. I'm seeing people on the yard. I'm seeing how they moving. I'm, you know, getting a better, you know, eyesight about what's going on out there on the population. Because where I was at in the jail, I could look out the window and see partial parts of one yard, but I couldn't see everything. I didn't see anybody I knew. 
you know, want nobody for me to me at the time from 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 just walking across the yard and looking out my window. But um, yeah, I just remember that man. That just stuck in my head because I was like, man, I don't, you know, what am I, you know, gonna go out here to? And he talking to all this officer stuff, and then I'm asking myself the questions like, can this man actually keep me in segregation? You know, and I had an undetermined amount of time, so that you know that that right there alone played a, a, a major psyche in your head, you know, like, okay, you know, so anyway, I remember, man, they let me out, and I told y'all before, when I got out, and I go into the first block I go into, I saw my old homeboy, Achi, the one I had, I told y'all a little bit about him, man, that had been on another institution with me, and was, you know, from the city, and, you know, a uh, a, 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 a drug boy out there getting that money was getting money in the prisons and you know they robbed him and you know he retaliated and uh you know he did some damage with that retaliation man and they ended up locking him up and then he ended up you know going to the uh, mental institution you know I think it was uh, uh um what was uh what's the mental institution called they went to that they got out here um uh Man, I can't think of it right now. It'll come in my head in a minute, man. Central State. So I think he ended up going to Central State. And, man, they doped him up, man. They put him on all them drugs. And it just messed his mind up, man. It messed his mind up. So when he ended up, you know, getting out of it, I guess they had sent him to Mecklenburg because of his incident when he came out of the mental institution. But, man, he was uh he was gone. He stopped talking. Like I told y'all, he just used to use hand signals and this, that, and the third. So I just remember seeing him, man, and I inventoried all of that stuff in my mind too. Like, you know, these people would, <laughs> they, they, they will mess you up, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he was messed up, you know what I'm saying? And he wasn't like that when I first met him. He was on his game, he was sharp. But when you get in these positions, man, these people will force feed you these drugs, man. If you, if they got a court order to put you on this stuff, man, they can put it on you, you know, or put it in you you know, by force or by choice. They would lock you in a room and just put that stuff in your food when you have no choice but to eat it because you can't get nothing else to eat. You know, and um that's probably what happened to him, man. But he he ended up being he he ended up being real messed up, man. So, you know, like I said, when I first went in the block, he was the only one in there. And um so I saw him first. So they was outside for Rex. So when then when Rex came back in, that's when I saw you know, some a uh, couple of people that I knew or familiar with their face, like Block. Block was in the building, you know what I'm saying? In my block, Southside Block. Salute the big old Block. Block was the one that I really knew because, like I said, I had been on the gusto with Block. Block had already went home, you know, went out there, did what he did, ended up coming back, which was, you know, crazy in itself. Uh, I remember Block was in the building, and I ended up having a dude, another little young dude that used to be, uh, he was my selling for a second on um, Augusta, a uh, dude from, from uh, Richmond, man. He was in there too, named Tony. And um, I ended up meeting Graham, you know what I'm saying? Salute to Graham, Hitman, DP. DP was in the block. I spoke about these dudes before in my other videos, but these dudes was in, up, they was in the block that I was in. Um, had a dude in there named Bemo, salute to Bemo. I talked to him recently. Um, that's a story within itself. I got to do that. I'm going to try to get him on here to do his story because BMO got an amazing story, man. He's <laughs> amazing story. I don't even want to give it up, but uh, it's one that y'all would definitely be interested in. It's um, some real live uh, movie stuff, man, that he went through in prison, you know. So um, BMO was in there. Uh, they had this big tall dude named Priest. He was in there, played basketball a lot. He put you in the frame of mind of a dude that thought he was a, you know, I don't know, man, like a, a pimp or something, man, because of the way he walked, talked, always smoked little cigars out the side of his mouth, wore little hats cocked to the side and be pimping. And he was tall, too, about 6'4". Love to get, you know, play basketball or whatnot, man. But, um, yeah, you had some characters in there, man, some real-life characters, man. You had some dudes in there, man. I think um, in this block, too, that was in there, or that I was in, I think they had, uh, oh, yeah, they had the dude Tony in there. Tony had did a whole lot of time. Um, uh, what's the 
what his last name was. I can't think of his last name, but Tony had did a whole lot of time. So the block was diverse, man. It wasn't like I say, but 12 of us in there, but it was a diverse block, man. Block was on um <laughs> Block was on some 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 uh uh some new stuff, man. Block was was crazy, man. Coming back, I guess coming back, you know, getting out of a life sentence, you know, getting that pardon from a life sentence and then coming back and got life plus. I guess his mind was all twisted. You know, he, he he was in his own zone. But like I say, he was blocked. You know, he was blocked. I knew him already. These cats had been on there with him for a little while, but I had knew him, you know, like previously from, from the other institutions. So I had a better understanding on what he was doing and how he was acting and how he was coming right. But uh, yeah, they was in all block, man. Block was off the chain in there, man. Block was drinking. Block used to get that wine in him. And see, the thing about Mecklenburg, I learned real fast it was different from most of the other institutions. Mecklenburg ain't care nothing about that wine stuff. They ain't care nothing about that little contraband. Like you got, uh, you only supposed to have one TV, you know, one little small fan, uh, I think a certain amount of shoes and clothes and certain amount of stuff that you was, you know, supposed to have that was under the rules of regulation. Mecklenburg ain't care nothing about that. Man, you go and do sale in Mecklenburg, man, they got two TVs, two or three fans for the summertime, all of that. Anywhere else or any other institution that's contraband, you can get the charge. You know, they're going to confiscate the stuff or whatever. Mecklenburg ain't care nothing about that. Only thing Mecklenburg was concerned about was them Bethlehem and them drugs because they knew one of them would cause you to use the other one. And that's all they cared about. You know, they weren't really pressed about that. I've been through shakedowns when they come in there and you got two TVs and a couple of fans and uh, five, six pair of shoes or whatever. They don't even worry about that. They looking for them weapons and they looking for them drugs. If you ain't got them, they really won't trip it, you know. Yeah, that's how it was the whole time I was there, man. You know, for Super Bowls and um, NBA championships and stuff like that, man. Dudes used to take, we had these big trash cans in there, man. Big old jokes like you probably see at, uh, at a McDonald's or something like that. But dudes used to take that, man, and put the big uh, plastic trash bags in them, and they used to make buckets and buckets of, of wine, man, you know, and, and we sit there and watch the Super Bowl, dudes, you know, dip their cup in there and drink, dudes, you know, drinking right there in broad daylight, bright and wide open, man, but they had this, uh, they had... <laughs> They had this sergeant up there, man. I think his name was like the liquor, man. If I ain't mistaken, I think it was like Johnny Walker. But he was an alcoholic himself. Man, he's coming that block and talk that trash when they had them games or something going on. But he might say, uh, where that liquor at, man? And he might get a dip himself. Hit him a little drink or something. He might, you know, say at the worst, he'll say, I'm going to tell y'all right now, if any type of fighting or anything go down up in here, man, I'm coming in here, everybody getting locked up, everybody getting charged. But as far as that, he ain't care, man. He might, I'm going to let it go, man. Let me get me one more drink. And he might drink some out of, out of, out of the uh, bucket itself, man. Sit in there, watch the game for a few minutes or whatever, and roll on out. It was crazy, man. You know, I hadn't been around that type of, uh, that type of stuff before because, like I say, on... Um, most institutions, man, like I say, they going to the letter, to the T or everything. You get a charge for the least little thing, man. You get a charge for having uh, salt and pepper in your cell or a slice of cheese from the kitchen or kitchen food or anything, you know, you'll get a charge for it's contraband. But they won't tripping about those type of things up there because, like I say, I guess they figured they had more things to deal with with the type of characters and the type of uh, 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 personalities that they had on this institution. Because, make no mistake about it, man, they, <laughs> this definitely was the danger zone. They, they got everybody up there who's who of what, you know, in the system up there, man. You you had them all up there. Like I say, on this institution alone, when I was there, you had you had Cupcake was on there. Um, like I say, all Pinky was up there. Uh, Wink Wink was up there. Um, Bo Billy eventually was up there. Uh... George George McGee was up there. George Lee Flight was up there. Bo Dixon was up there. Stacy Perry was up there. Um, man, this it, uh, uh, Wheel was up there. Roscoe was up there. Gangsta Slim was up there. Um, 
Mark Peace was up there. Marty was up there. Uh, 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 Hercules was up there. Um, Riverboat was up there. I, I mean, man, it just goes on and on. Uh, 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 Shorty Pimp was up there. Um, DC Harden was up there. Uh, 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 Shorty Sice was up there. Um, man, it just it just went on and on, man. I mean, like all the names that you might have heard in the system or had heard about, basically, like I said, if if they was living up to their name or their reputation, that's where they was gonna end up at Mecklenburg. It won't it won't no other place to go. That's it. So you knew this when you went out there on that yard and you seen all these people and you start putting faces to names that you had heard about and you watching them, you see them. Me, I was anyway, and you getting an idea of who they are and the things you heard they done or the things you heard that they've been involved in. So you, I'm inventorying all of this in my mind so I can get the lay of the land and know who I'm dealing with and what I'm dealing with. Um, like I say, me first getting there, and, and I'm not knowing too many people. I knew Tony. Tony really, he, he really wasn't my type of dude, though. But he was a, uh, he was somebody that I knew. So I talked to him a little bit. But Block, me and Block, I, me and Block always had a good relationship. We was always cool. But like I told you, huh, Block was on some. Uh, Block was on some gorilla stuff up there. He just said, settled in in his mind, man. That um, you know, he probably was stuck by him coming back. He probably figured like he won't get out. So he was going through some changes within himself, some some things that he had to deal with his own demons, right? So you may get blocked this week, man, and blocked just as cool as a fan. He ain't bothering nobody or nothing. He just enjoying himself. You may get blocked next week where Block don't even want to come out to sell. He don't want to talk to nobody. He don't want nobody to talk to him. He just on on his on his grind, like just leave me alone. I ain't got no rap. You know, and Block was a, a big dude, man. He was short, real short. He was shorter than me. Block probably was about five, six, but Block was so wide and stocky, you know, Block probably weighed about 240, you know, at five, six, and strong as a bull. I'm telling go out on the weight pad, I can bench over 400 easily. Couple of reps like it won't nothing. And he was athletic. He had a big, big old gut, but he was athletic. He was one of the best running backs on the, on the, um, on the compound because yeah, we played football out there, and I'm talking about <laughs> some, like, longest yards type football, man. We out there on there playing football with no equipment, no nothing. I mean, tackle. Dudes getting their legs broke, getting their arms broke, getting their teeth knocked out. I mean, all just for bragging rights. But we, you know, we out there, we playing, you know. So it, it was crazy, man. But Block... He was he was he was one of the best running backs out there, man. He run you slam over. He was powerful, low, built to the ground. But uh, Block was a dangerous dude, man, because he had no limits of what he would do or who he would do it to, you know. So you always had to keep in mind of him. And then, like I say, he had a he had a propensity to lose his lose his temper too. He'll lose his temper for anything. I've seen him in the block. Um, watching football, just get mad because somebody said some or his team was losing and he might just stand up and just flip the whole table over. You know, and dudes is like bagging up like, man, man, what's going on, man? And he's like, what? What, man? Everybody, just leave me alone. Leave me alone. And he get to bite his tongue. He was, Bo Billy did that when he got mad. They bite their tongue like, man, you know, and Block, Block would just snap out. And like I say, Dudes would try not to 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 really say nothing to him when he was in that type of mode because if you did, you probably you probably was gonna have to get some get some get some business. You probably was gonna have to get some wreck because he ain't had no problem with that none whatsoever. Um, so like I say, he was he was he was a he was a major part of the block that I was in because like I say, he he had a big big attitude, a big personality. But like I say, he was like Jekyll and Hyde. You know, Jekyll and Hyde, I can remember one day he, uh, you know, we had the big 13-inch TVs at the time, but we also had big boom box, like big radios that we could have. So, Block had a brand new TV, and like I say, the TV is the big ticket item. That's 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 what you can have, and they're the most expensive thing you can have. Plus, we in a single cell. <coughs> Excuse me, we in a single cell up there, so we, you know what I'm saying, your TV is your best friend. 
that's your entertainment. That's what you got to keep the boredom off you, to keep your mind off of what's going on, the reality of where you at, the reality of your situation. Your TV was your escape, so everybody wanted the TV. Everybody couldn't even afford the TV because they was they was straight raping us with the TV, causing like $200, $230 for a 13-inch TV. So everybody wanted the TV, man. So I can remember Block Man, this is just the type of stuff he do. You know, Block Man came out there one day and just told uh, dudes, hollered out to the pod, man, say, man, who got a big radio, man? Who got a big radio that they trying to trade for the TV? Who got a big radio, man? I'm trying to get the radio, man. Y'all can get my TV. I'm trying to trade. You know, I'm tired of this TV. F this TV. I don't even want it no more. You know, and I can remember him trading a dude. He gave a dude his TV for the radio. The radio probably cost maybe like ninety, hundred and something dollars. He gave a dude his TV for the radio. So he in a single cell now with no TV at all. All he got in there is the music and the radio. He'll get in those type of moves where he'll do things like that. He had a lot of people looking out for him when he first got locked up and everything. He, man, he had homeboys might send him like $500, $800 on his books. Like, you know what I'm saying? It won't nothing. Man, Block might get there. He was a good dude, though. I mean, like I say, a real good dude. Block might get there. $800 Joan in there. And at this time on, on Mecklenburg, we go to the store. It really wasn't no spending limit. They hadn't put all of that type of stuff on it. Block might go to the store, man, get $800 in and go to the store and go down to the commissary, man, and buy about five, six hundred dollars worth of stuff and come up in there and, man, designate dudes to fix this food, fix that food or whatever, and just throw a party and bring his little boom box out there and put it down and let it be playing and let everybody in the block eat. All 12 people, anything you want to eat, man, we fix the food down here. Y'all just come on down here and eat it. You know what I'm saying? He had that type of heart. He was a good dude. Like I say, when he on that type of level, when he got that type of energy going with him right then and there, but when he got that other type of energy going with him where he just like F everybody, oh, that's when he dangerous. That's when he ain't to be played with. He'll snap out, lose his temper for the least little thing, and you'll never know when it's coming. You can't even see it, you know? You can't even see it coming. I remember he was in that block one time, <laughs> And man, everybody was talking. I think we was watching some type of wrestling or something. And everybody was talking and laughing and, 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 and saying this, that, and the third. So then they was talking about certain wrestlers. So Block was talking about how good he wrestled. And Priest was talking about he used to wrestle in high school. So the next thing you know, you look over, Block and Priest over there on the floor wrestling. They wrestling right there in the middle of the park. Now, man, you, like I told you, Block ain't number like five, six, but he's super strong. Priest is like six foot. So they wrestling and they tussling and Priest trying to put him in all these holes and everything. Man, the next thing you know, man, Block then got behind him and then put him in what we call the dope fiend and got him in this joint like this and choking the life out dude, man. He choking the life out dude. Dude started foaming. I think I told y'all this before, but he just was foaming out the mouth. His ass was popping out, and he tapping Block, trying to tell Block to let him go, and Block just squeezing him and biting his tongue, and like, yeah, yeah. And, man, we, we said, Block, man, you got to let him go, man. You got to let the dude go, man. So he just choking him and choking him, man. And then we go over there. We trying to stop him and, and, and grabbing him and everything. And then when he finally released the dude and let him go, he was standing up, man. Dude was shaking and foaming and trying to get himself back together. And Block walking around, biting on his tongue, telling him, my bad, man. My bad, I just snapped. I just snapped out. You know, he got a little list. He's like, I just snapped. You know, I just snapped out, man. My bad. You know, and, and, and he's serious. He, you know what I'm saying? So that's what you 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 decide to gauge his, his his personality, and you know that you're dealing with a dude, man. That's just you know he unpredictable and he uncontrollable. You know what I'm saying? With the police, with convicts, whoever, he will snap out at the. Drop of a dime, he'll go from being happy to, to being sad, to being depressed, leave him alone, to just straight gorilla mode. You know, and when he go in gorilla mode, it, <clears throat> if you ain't trying to kill him, you better get out the way. Straight up, you better get out the way, man. So, yeah, so we, I, I, I'm learning all of this about these people. Like, Block, I knew about, but I'm learning other dudes' character in there. At that time, me and Graham, you know, uh, Hitman, man, you know, we started getting cool. You know, DP with his little larceny, you know, he was already cool with Graham, so he started being cool with me by association. 
you know, me and Graham had a lot in common. We used to talk boxing and everything. And uh, he had boxing in the system for a while. And he had been down way longer than me, you know. And um, he had ended up on uh, Mecklenburg for being on Buckingham. And I think he either bust somebody in the head or something, split somebody's head open or whatever. And uh, we started getting cool, man. We used to work out, man, talk boxing, and just sit in there and kick it, man. He had a good personality. I could, I could really jail with him. But like I said, for the most part, man, I was learning the compound, and I got off on, on, on a bad foot because I still had that gambling in me, man. And that gambling, man, I'm telling you, that gambling is the devil, man. And now, not only I got... I got that little habit again because I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm good. I'm thinking I can win and all this and all that. And it's the adrenaline rush with it. So now I got that little that little that little jump itching me to play. And I get out there and I get to getting in these poker games and skin games and stuff out here on Mecklenburg. But now you playing with everybody at the table. It's a killer. Everybody at the table got that Bethlehem. Everybody out there is willing to put some work in at the drop of a dime. So you dealing with that and you knowing that and then you gonna put yourself in harm's way to get right in the midst of that and I'm getting in this stuff and I'm knowing what the play is, I'm knowing how it go down and everybody lose in poker when they lose, everybody mad. Everybody got an attitude so something can pop off at any given moment. So I know this, but at the same time, man, I guess my immaturity, me being young, I really won't, you know what I'm saying, paying attention or I just was just, Going off of, man, I'm here, I'm locked up, I ain't got nothing else to do. This is the most entertaining thing, you know. So I was in that life, man, and um, I was putting myself in some super dangerous situations. But at the same time, I was already willing to do whatever, whenever it came to me, you know. Which sounds crazy because you don't want no drama, but yet you putting yourself in the middle of drama. But like I said, I wasn't thinking on the level that I think on now, so... I really wasn't looking at it at all angles. All the way I was looking at it was, well, I'm going to play because everybody else playing. I'm trying to play too. So if somebody come at me, I, I know what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, they know what they're going to do as well. So it's just a crazy situation. And I can remember getting in them games, man, and um, it didn't even take long. Uh, matter of fact, OG was there too. Shout out G. G ended up being my... Uh, um, Selling and re-entry on the way home. He did the same amount of time I did. I think he did 32 years and everything. Had six L no six life sentences without parole, man. And he ended up, you know, getting it back in court and get a parole date. He out here now doing good, man. Doing doing a lot of good things, man. Probably try to get him on this channel before it's over with. So salute to G too. But G G was a stone cold maniac. I mean a maniac. And I, what else could you be? You know, he from New York. What else can you be? You got six life sentences on you. You have no uh, idea of daylight whatsoever. You ain't going to see daylight at all. So that that was his mentality. You know, so I can remember, man, being in the poker game, man, when I first saw something jump off, man. And and um, it was G, man. He was just like uh, feeling like the hand he won. Dude saying he didn't win the hand. The, the house man is confused. He telling them they got to sort it out. Dude saying it's his money. G saying it's his money. G didn't do a whole lot of yelling or arguing or nothing. And he just kept on saying, so dude kept saying, it's mine, man. I won the pot. G kept on saying, so you're going to take the money. He said, nah, I'm telling you I won the pot. So you're going to take the money. No, I won the pot, man. So G just calmed the man, just stood up. He said, okay, all right, I understand. All right. And he just turned around and walked away. And we out here like, man, what? And he walked straight over to where we had the weights over there on the small yard on Mecklenburg and just grabbed the curl bar, dumped the weights off, dumped the, dumped the other side off, and started coming over there with the weight bar and said, yeah, well, I'm going to show you how you're going to take it. And just cocked that jump back, and next thing you know, it was on. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.